uncomfortable in, in those situations. I think that the best equipment we had were the, the boots. I mean, the boots were just exceptional things. Not perfect, and we, um, we often had to fix them. Um, but these are pretty good boots. The worst equipment we had was finding a sort of a middle range glove. We had some amazing, what are the, the big gloves? The, these big gloves we had um, we're just, um, these are about as good a glove as you can get for when you're just sort of sitting in the camp and you need to stay warm. But the moment you have to do something, the moment you have to sort of um, get your camera out or you need to fix a ski pole, they're useless. These gloves we were given, I mean, these you could buy in any shop. They're hardly anything special. So what we, what we, what we really suffered was sort of a high-tech glove to do, to, that you could actually do things with. I know. Yeah. It's like really basic things like, um, just, just sort of campsite maintenance. It's common sense things, but it's amazing, you know, the common sense doesn't come until very late on in the race. So, um, you yeah, know, we learned things, but also just to... How did these work when it was that kind of temperature? The, the sleeping bags were, were great, but of course, you know, this is good to down, down to about minus 100 degrees, okay. and, and you, get, you get very hot in it at night sometimes, and sweat. So amazing, and you would know this here, we would actually have these on top of our sleds on sunny days um, because it's such a dry environment and it would dry out. Um, or it would go icy and then you'd shake it and it would break out. But the worst thing, of course, is a wet sleeping bag in the cold. It just turns into an ice box. How many nights in the Six weeks. Six weeks. Okay. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. And um, when we were, when we were in Sweden, we used this um, because there, we didn't have to worry about the battery and of course it was dark most of the time at Christmas and so we'd wind it okay. and this was the only light, light we had in our tent. And we'd, so they were, of course you have to wind for about 10 or so minutes and you get not the greatest light but it was enough. Okay. But the other thing we had was, you know, because we were pushing our bodies to the extreme and, you know, people can get in a lot of danger and trouble doing these things. We had like little silly things just to keep us happy at the end of the day. And this was a book that our friends in England had put together for us. And, you know, one person here is giving us a, a weather forecast for the Caribbean, 30 degrees, sunny all day. Um, and every day we'd read a different page of the book. And it was just sort of, and we would actually, this sounds crazy now, because now we want to go home and watch Heroes on TV. But in, in this case, you know, we just want to read one page. It was the most exciting part of the day, reading this one page of the book. We were very strict. It was only one page per day. Yeah, we'd, we'd so get in arguments know. about who would get to read it each day. You didn't ask anyone before you went on the trip. I mean, a lot of people go, go uh, not a lot of people, but yeah. people go there. But you didn't ask anybody? For advice? For, for, for advice, yes. Well, I mean, to be honest, I mean, what we learned in Sweden, we knew that it was going to be very, very hard. Yeah. And, um, and as, to be honest, some of the sort of the not knowing was quite helpful. Because okay. if you knew exactly what we were going to get into, yeah. then it would have been a a lot more scary. I mean, yeah. you know, I remember on the first training week on the skis, I was sort of falling over, being I cannot believe I signed up for 800 kilometers of this. <laughs> so I mean, had I known more, then it would probably have been less exciting to go. I mean, ev everyone's different. And uh, one, one trick we did learn actually when we were there was that it was horrible always getting into the tent at the end of the day when you're covered in equipment, it's very windy. So we actually, we actually dug a hole at the entrance to the tent that was sort of like a seat, so you could put your legs down and walk in to the tent, and that would make this life a little bit more civilized. So we actually called our tent the Hilton Hotel okay. by the end. It was, this was our five-star suite. <laughs> what, watching my, my colleague, we did the same thing when we were out yeah. uh, four weeks ago, and it was very helpful. Yeah, it's a really in. good thing to do. <laughs> yeah. It means you can sit down and oh. yeah. Yeah. Any more questions? Har ni några frågor? Jag vet inte om ni vill ställa frågor till Sven. Det är någon som är ett av lärare som kan översätta i så fall. Är det någon som har något? Vi vill inte vara blyga, det är bara fråga på. Has anyone here been to the North Pole? Or the South Pole? Or to the top of Everest? Or is anyone planning to go? Before the whole North Pole melts, I, uh, I recommend you to try and get up to the, the far, far, far north, which is um, 
It's just like it's 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 Sweden, but then with a whole another another element. It's like walking on the moon, and it's a, it's an amazing place to go. It may not have the view of Everest, but it's got the excitement of polar bears. And you know, this is a landscape and a place that's unlikely to be there in a hundred years' time. So, if you get the chance, um, I'd jump at it. It's um, horrible and cold, but it's worth it. And every time you're you're probably the only people to have walked on it, because obviously it melts every summer. And so every time you take a step, you're probably the only person ever to have taken a step on that device. And because we were winning the race, every morning when James went for a poo in the morning, he'd say, I'm the most north person in the world having a poo today. <laughs> but it would have to be very quick. But thank you very much for coming today. Yes, thank you very much. Ah, sex week with the hammer there. Oh, peace out, last year. But don't let them say that's peace out, though. Don't let them wider than this room with putting a bag every 80 meters uh, full of snow and then walk along with a shovel and sort of pat it out make sure it's nice and flat and we did this and when they came in the wind had changed and they said oh rubbish they we'll didn't use our own way but we were really foolish because when the day we arrived at north pole we sort of thought well celebrate so we ate all the rest of our that casserole stuff that, that we loved so much we finished our food and we were left only with um I think we had cereal, usually cereal, that's all we had left. So the, the weather changed, and then there was a big blizzard, and they said, sorry, the plane won't come for another two days, and we realized, we've got, we've got no food. So we were there at the North Pole, and we were going to the other, the other competitors as they arrived at the North Pole and begging for food. So we, we lost a lot of weight in the last two days at the North Pole. Um, there's a really easy answer to your final question, and that is no, I would not do it again. And we were asked to go to the South Pole, and I think just the memory of that extreme cold is enough to put us off. We want to do other adventures, but not, not anything cold again. The mo as for the motivation, for me, I mean, my motivation comes from working with kids like this. Any more questions? Come on, any embarrassing questions? People normally ask, um, how did you go to the toilet or things like that? No questions? The answer to that is very quickly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> very quickly.